I'm uh, Tony De Palma from the international team. I'm mainly involved in uh, product localization. So whenever you see an English program from ACA software, it comes from, from the work of our team here in ACA. This morning, I wanted to show you a quick demo of uh, architecture of BIM design software edifices, which is um, also a flagship product for ACA. It's fully IFC certified for import and export by Building Smart. So this morning I wanted just to show you the basic features, some of which may be of great interest to you. Um, we'll start off by doing a simple input of um, a residential structure. We'll start off by using a 2D grid here, construction grid that we can build up in our workspace. We'll just set up the uh, dimensions of this grid place it into position and start to insert our architectural objects. We have a wide range of different objects, uh, walls, windows, and so on. We'll just choose one type and start to insert it using the snap points on the grid itself. Or we can even use these accelerators which insert all of the walls just in one quick click. Then we can continue to model our structure inserting walls, deleting others, changing thicknesses, moving walls around and so on, like you would normally do. There's also another way of inputting our structure, taking a simple DWG DXF CAD drawing, maybe supplied by a colleague or whatever. We'll insert a scaling factor, import the DXF drawing, place into position, and then, of course, we can also start to draw on top of this as a, a drawing reference. Or we can use the magic wand, we call it, to place our walls into position by simply tracing a line across our walls. It will automatically detect where the walls are and uh, insert them into position. These are now, of course, become uh, 3D uh, BIM objects with their own properties and uh, typical uh, BIM data. We can also see that we're, while we're doing this in 2D, we're also creating our model in 3D. So just to show you what we're doing, as you can see here below, we're insert inserting our doors and windows and so on. And you can see that they are uh, also inserted below in the 3D view. We can switch the opening directions for our walls. We can test um, interferences and so on. See if this will disappear. Okay. So we can uh, change the opening directions for our walls and so on. Then continuing to insert other objects, uh, again in 3D model. You can see we can insert our openings directly in 3D, which in turn will also be inserted in 2D. We can change the geometry. We can add other details, such as a casing, as you can see here. We can uh, decide to uh, add a casing to these openings and continue to insert uh, other objects uh, such as our doors, choosing them from the uh, BIM objects library. This is a front entrance door. We'll choose that from our library according to the type that we require. Otherwise, we can create our own if necessary. Again, for the uh, main entrance door, we'll uh, set this with a, a certain opening angle. Stairs. Um, inserting our stairs becomes very, very um, simple because we have uh, its own dedicated editor. In fact, we can insert the various objects, uh, ramps, landings, and so on. We can shape these according to what, um, our geometrical needs within the model. And as you can see here on the uh, right of the editor, the landing and the ramps are automatically connected. Such as with the railings, as you can see, we can use the actual staircase model as a reference using its snap points to fix our railing into position. We can add uh, intermediate poles, uh, change the style of our railing and so on. Next up, we'll see how we can develop our structure across various levels and therefore in our height reference system where we can set up all of our levels we can create first floor, second floor reaching up to as many floors as we like 
and then copy this basic floor plan layout as we uh, can see in the 3D view across to the other levels with a simple click. At this stage we can continue to model our structure, we can edit various parts, removing sections that we don't need, as you can see here, inserting further windows, and also align them according to a preferred axis on the vertical. Okay. Next up, we'll uh, see how we can apply materials. These are materials are available in our online BIM objects library. We have uh, thousands of different materials. Uh, all of these are PBR materials, so they are already mapped with uh, the various texture maps that we need for creating high definition renderings that we'll be seeing afterwards. So we can just simply choose the uh, preferred material and start to apply them on our model. Let's choose one here from our library and start to apply our materials on our front facades as you can see very quickly. The roof edit editor um, just for the sake of uh, showing these dedicated editors allows us to automatically set up our rooftop with the auto pitch function which automatically designs our roof drawing according to a certain footprint. We can obviously continue to model our roof um, in this way as you can see. This will automatically connect all of our roof slabs uh, at once. And just for the sake of showing you how flexible the uh, editor is, uh, we'll show you how we can frame our rooftop in this very simple manner. We'll just concentrate this um, section of the demo on our rooftops where we'll automat automatically insert our beams. So we can obviously choose the preferred um, section profile from the uh, beam objects library and automatically uh, insert these ridge beams around the roof structure as you can see here automatically. Again we'll apply a material to our beams. Okay. And for our friends from uh, FrameCAD and many of you uh, here at the ITC meeting uh, talking about framing structures and so on we can do the same thing using our beam grid work object where we can set up um, our framing system directly on the roof slab itself. A simple click just applies the uh, beam grid work. We can also apply a secondary beam uh, grid work to our structure. We we'll choose a different profile this time and automatically frame our roof structure as you can see. A simple click. No worries, no need to go into a different section of the program. It's all done in 3D. And of course, uh, all of our 2D drawings are also updated automatically. So that was just an example just to show you how the framing can work. We'll load up um, a complete model now of our building so that I can show you uh, some more basic features dealing with, uh, as you can see, the models completed here. We can continue to edit our structure. This time we'll see an integration with SketchUp where we can apply uh, other 3D entities as you can see. We can model directly in SketchUp. We can bring in furniture also which is very useful because we can um, load in materials, furniture, other architectural uh, accessories from the online uh, warehouse or from uh, specific manufacturers. And as you can see these are brought into edifices directly as a 3D external object. Drawing documentation and working drawings automatically created. We have specific objects for that. We can also choose different styles for visualization of our floor plans, elevation views, cross sections, and so on. We can automatically measure up our rooms with a simple click. No need to worry about finding specific points. The program will do it all by itself. And we can also decide to dimension everything all in one go, as you can see. This completes uh, one of our, let's say, uh, drawing models for the first floor.
We can obviously do the same for others, cross sections, elevation views, and so on. Going to the first floor here, we're going to trace a section line across the staircase so that we can view the uh, cross section going across our uh, staircase entity. We can add our shading effects just to give it a little bit more depth and more sense of uh, uh, artistic visualization when we're preparing our construction documents. Of course, this applies also to our perspective and elevation views and so on. But it may be necessary, of course, that once we've uh, created our drawings, we may still need to make some uh, modifications to the model. And we can still do this from our drawing model because it's a, an object that is linked to the uh, 3D model of our building. So what we can do is we can uh, continue to edit within um, 3D model and notice that our drawings will be updated. We can also create the uh, cutaway drawings, which are very useful for having a complete overview of our building in 3D, cutting away those entities that we do not need. So we can decide which entities are to be cut through and which uh, we prefer to see in full version. We can set the different colors here just to give it uh, a more uh, artistic look and feel and create obviously our screenshots which will then flow into our uh, documents. Shading analysis uh, based on the fact that the, load, the, uh, the entire building is also geolocated we can also run a quick simulation of the model. We'll now see um, a different video in which uh, we'll be seeing our uh, land editor. Uh, Edificious land is uh, a separate module. Uh, in fact, it's also uh, included in uh, Edificious full version, but it's also a standalone solution. So if um, anybody's basically involved in landscape design, garden design, and so on, this is the kind of solution that deals with just that kind of uh, situation. We can, of course, um, import um, a digital elevation map of our territory directly into Edificious using Google Maps. We have a direct connection with Google Maps and therefore import the uh, terrain profile. Here we can see that we are um, positioning our building according to a specific position on the uh, map. We can vary the, uh, the altitude according to a reference point on our building and start to model within our land uh, model here. Inserting various objects, we'll start off with the earthworks object, which can be will obviously be an excavation or a, a fill. Using the transparency, we can align according to the building. Okay can add an escarpment around, which will automatically link up the surrounding terrain to the excavation works. We can add other objects, model these in 3D space. This becomes a project level in the uh, navigator here on the right hand side. Other objects also including the yard object, automatically inserted using the snap points around our building and we can also elevate these according to the uh, uh, height nodes that we may prefer. We have uh, the landscaping wall which is also customizable here on the right hand side in the parameters box so we can define which kind of um, upper or lower profile we want. Insert that automatically. Vary the height if necessary, and therefore complete our landscaping design around the building. We can also add our roads. This will be our surrounding road that connects up to our new building. We can vary the width. We can add a pavement. There you go, automatically updated in 3D. The escarpment can also have an offset towards the external part of the perimeter. We can add a pavement, as you can see, all in, all, all in automatic, not a, a separate uh, modeling process. 
Next object, we have the swimming pool. Also inserted in 2D, we can see that on the 3D view here on the side, it's automatically uh, updated. We can vary the geometry, the depth of our swimming pool. Then of course, add materials if necessary. And a flower bed just to uh, increase the level of detail and decorate the uh, external part of our building with uh, flowers and vegetation and so on. In fact, our library includes a wide selection of different kinds of uh, trees, plants, bushes. They are all included in the online library. With this function here, we've automatically inserted our vegetation within a defined perimeter space. We can choose the uh, vegetation that we prefer and change the layout of our garden. Insert some more bushes here on the side and also define what kind of distribution method we want to use. Insert another tree here, also available in our online uh, BIM objects library. We can define the height of the tree either analytically by inserting the value manually or by uh, varying and adjusting the height uh, in 3D view. Again, uh, materials to complete the external design of our building. And as you can see, we've also inserted our materials. The next uh, part of the demonstration involves cost estimating, which uh, being another aspect, another very important aspect when uh, designing. Instead of having to send our project off to a quantity surveyor, we can do all of this within Edificious. In fact, we integrate with our own uh, cost estimating uh, solution, which is Primus which has now become a standard here in Italy for cost estimating and construction cost management. We can switch to the bill of quantities uh, environment where we have uh, full control over uh, the model in 3D, as you can see. And we can also uh, link up the entities present in our model to cost items present in a price book. Let's just load an example price book here. So I can show you how we can link up cost items to the objects in our model. We'll search for a specific item here that we want to use for our window. So we can search for our window cost item. There we go. Simple drag and drop over to the 3D uh, element here in the inspection box. And we can assign it to a category for organization of our bill of quantities if necessary. And as you can see, we've already linked up our object. All we need to do now is acquire the metric information contained within the object itself. Because, of course, we're talking about intelligent objects with their own properties. They can be thermal, physical, they can be mechanical, they can be cost items. So uh, we're, we're using the variables here so we can uh, read the information directly from the object itself. And therefore use the surface variable or the width and height variables and so on. Even the description of the item is a simple variable contained within the object itself. And as you can see here, we are automatically composing in the left hand side of the box here, the price for this specific item as selected in the model. Now, if we filter down and select all of the windows, as you can see here, we can apply the same cost item to all of the windows in just one simple click. We have them all listed here. We know where they are. We know where they are placed throughout the various levels of our building. And with a simple click, we've automatically built up our bill of quantities for all of the windows in our building. The same applies for the room object, which has now become uh, the entity necessary for accounting for internal plastering. So we can bring in the price list item for our plastering and assign it over to the uh, BIM object, which is the room object, use the measurement models so that we can consider any openings that are obviously in our walls, referring to you know, doors and windows and so on. And as you can see, we are now automatically 
taking into account the plastering for all of our uh, rooms in our wall, in our building, sorry. Because we are dealing with objects, as you can see, when we select one of the items in the bill of quantities, it's also highlighted in the uh, 3D model of our building. So we have complete control over what we are doing without the risk of missing any elements in the process of creating our bill of quantities. So a very dynamic approach, a unitary solution where we can deal with everything involved in bill of quantities. As you can see here, when dealing with objects, we also have all of the information related to the sizes, dimensions. So what happens if we change the size of an object? The bill of quantities will automatically update. So if you keep your eye on the values here, which are highlighted in the uh, left box here, where we have the window main entrance door uh, 03, you'll notice that as we vary the size of this object in 3D view and in 2D view, the price of that uh, object will, of course, vary automatically. So even if somebody else deals with modeling our building, makes um, variations, modifies the structure, because it's already linked to a specific price list item uh, in the bill of quantities environment, the bill of quantities will automatically update with no need to worry about having to look where the modification took place. We can, of course, also integrate with uh, Primus, which is our professional solution, where we can uh, bring in an external bill of quantities that were probably created by somebody else. We can select from a different document uh, specific items. Here we can see we, that we have linked up these illustrations uh, to each of the measurement rows in our bill of quantities and integrate these into the bill of quantities that we just created within Edificius. So full integration, seamless integration between the two applications. No need to do any importing or exporting. Next video is the Gantt uh, and therefore the time schedules, which is also an integrated environment within Edificius. Uh, obviously very uh, useful because I suppose you can imagine taking a journey without having a map or a navigator with you. At some point, you're going to end up getting lost. You don't know where to turn. And it's more or less the same thing when dealing with time schedules and planning the works and synchronizing the work processes within a project. We do this with a 4D Gantt environment. In fact, again, dealing with objects, we can create a timeline with various activities. These will, of course, span across a certain amount of time, days within the construction process. We can define each of these activities. We can obviously concentrate our attention on specific parts of the building and link up these objects to the timeline present in the Gantt chart. For instance, we want to insert these horizontal slabs, link them up to the timeline which will be spanning across a certain number of days in the timeline itself. We can move each of these activities along. We can link them up, connect them physically with um, other uh, connection objects. We can continue to insert other relevant objects present in our model here across the foundation. We want to use these foundation walls, the interior um, partition walls of this building here at the first level and drag and drop them over into the timeline. Very simple process. We'll add another one, move the timeline across for another group of objects present in our model. This time we'll use these glazing objects here across the uh, floor, the ground floor, link these up these are our curtain walls, and we know that these are going to be installed uh, at a certain point. When we run the timeline, we can see how the building process is represented in a simulation, 3D simulation, so we can understand perfectly if there are any interferences and if we need to modify. We can also go and view this uh, animation, uh, which takes the um, object present in the timeline and shows us the building process as it takes place across 
a certain amount of time. So we can see that the walls are being built at a certain point, the roads come into place, the external works may be added, and we can see a complete simulation of the entire building process as it takes place in the design phase within Edificius. Okay. Next up, we'll be seeing the real-time rendering, which of course is a very important part when it comes to uh, presentations. Uh, these days, architects just can't simply rely on 2D drawings or 3D representations of their drawings. We need to present our architectural project because we need to experience it. It's not enough to just view the architecture. We need to experience it in some way. So we have an embedded um, real-time rendering, which we call real-time BIM, which is also uh, incorporated into Edificious, where we can create uh, these real-time renderings animations within our architectural model so we can navigate around we can we can create our, uh, a certain pathway to use as a navigation uh, as a tour of our architectural model we can see the water here animated water and we can move around our building taking a glimpse at the various details having a look at the materials the effects of the, these materials, at which, as I said before, these are PBR materials. We can see the effects of the wind on the trees here, which are also animated. We can add uh, depth of field to give it a more photographic um, feel to the uh, um, images and the animations. We can add uh, climatic effects such as rain here. You can't hear the rain at the moment because, <laughs> but there is also background noises for each of these different effects. So as you can see, the materials become wet uh, as the, the rain effects uh, come on. We can see the effects of clouds, the artificial lighting, and therefore assess the various effects uh, on our building. We also have dynamic grass, as you can see. The grass object also uh, is affected by the effect of wind and therefore we can change the dimensions of our grass, change the color and so on. A simple simulation here again to show you the effects of shading according to the position of our building. So we can assess the effect of sunlight. We can also simulate artificial lighting for our building as you can see very realistic and enables our clients to assess the effects um, that uh, will be uh, adopted for our building. Internal rendering, same thing. Uh, within the building here, we can have a look around. We can assess the materials. We can see where our furniture will be placed. We can have a full perception of how the spaces are organized. And therefore, assess the uh, decision making uh, of our designer so far. Simulate the um, effects of uh, sunlight within our room as you can see across the 24 hours. And again switch on our internal lighting within the interior of our building. So this is all real time, okay? This happens in front of your eyes. It's used as a simulation of our building. Uh, we do not uh, do any exporting of this. Uh, of course, we can export this as a, as a movie, as a, uh, an RV file. We can complete the model by adding vehicles around, people walking around to give it a more complete feel of interaction uh, and present this to our client in a much more professional manner. We can uh, obviously continue to edit the model while using the 3D uh, real-time rendering. So as you can see here, if we need to make any adjustments to the interior 
design of our building, we can see these updated automatically in the real-time rendering. In fact, you can see the TV animation there, just to prove that it's uh, all in real-time. We'll move the table. Once it's located into, it, into its new position, we can see the update in the real-time rendering view. We can add the cutaway drawings that we prepared previously and apply them to the real-time rendering uh, environment just to have a full 3D glimpse of our building, an overlook, an eye, uh, a bird's eye view of our building with the uh, cutaway drawing set up. We have this uh, guy here on a bicycle hoping he won't fall into the swimming pool. And of course also complete our drawings with the visualization effects. And that's basically it with the real-time rendering. Another important feature that we have introduced in Edificious is uh, rendering with artificial intelligence. Here you can view just a couple of uh, sample images of what we have been uh, creating in the past couple of weeks because this is a really new feature. This is ray tracing um, rendering with artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, denoising. These are just a couple of uh, sample images of a couple of projects that we put to be, to put together. The detail here is uh, really, really photorealistic, as you can see. And this feature is also embedded into Edificious. You can see here the effects of uh, photorealism, the high quality materials. All of these materials are available online in our BIM objects library. No need to worry about finding the various texture maps we have them already in our library the great thing about uh, artificial intelligence in ray tracing rendering is that we can update our view while the rendering is taking place it's in process so we don't need to go back make the modifications and then relaunch the uh, modeling process the uh, rendering process again it's all done in uh, real time in fact you can see here in the preview box uh, that we have here on the right hand side the rendering is updated automatically as we move around in this um, uh, stylish bathroom. We can make adjustments the, um, for direct lighting, for the exposure uh, settings and so on. And also set this into the, uh, instead of using the, the preview box, we can also render the 3D viewport automatically with machine learning denoising. So you can see that as the render passes increase, the quality of the image also increases. We'll just move here to one side. As you can see here, we are updating the render directly in the 3D viewport. As a matter of fact, the, um, this specific feature uses the um, background image, the, 360, the 360 panorama image, and acquires the lighting intensity from the image itself to light up the scene. We can also, as you can see, insert the um, depth of field effect directly as we are creating the preview. So we can vary the focal distance, the f-stop for the photographic settings. And you can see that the rendering is uh, automatically taking place and updating the image with all of these effects in real time. Once we've found the correct position, we've made the, the settings that we prefer, we can then create the final render, which takes just a fraction of the time. In fact, we have um, uh, speeded up the normal ray tracing process uh, up to 10 times faster than normal rendering would take. These images can be in full HD. And while this is continuing, we can also vary the exposure uh, in process. So we don't need to do any external uh, photo editing or sending it to Photoshop for any external um, improvements in terms of the lighting or contrast and so on. We can do this automatically while the rendering takes place. We can also add a bloom effect. As 
as you can see, while the rendering progresses. All of these images, once they're completed, will then be added to the rendering node here on the, the tree menu on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side, as you can see here. All of the renderings are then added into the document so that when we save the document, all of these become part of the document and not, uh, no necess not necessarily uh, an external folder that goes with the model of our project. Okay, this is the real-time uh, ray tracing with artificial intelligence. And this is the complete image that we can then export or we can save internally. Just another image here showing you the, um, the quality of the kind of renderings that we can achieve with uh, Edificious. This takes us to the uh, next solution, which is the um, BIM collaboration solution. Us BIM platform. In fact, we'll take a look at the uh, CDE, which we have uh, proposed on the Italian market at the moment, soon available in other countries. The a very important aspect in dealing with uh, BIM collaboration, um, entirely designed to respect the technical requirements at an international level, as you can see in this chart. Um, serves as a sh shared knowledge resource for information exchange regarding a facility and to become a reliable basis for decision-making processes within the uh, BIM process and with regard to the entire uh, life cycle of a building asset. The basic characteristic of our CDE, uh, our BIM platform, is that it, anybody involved in the, in the BIM process is not necessarily linked to having to use the native format uh, which was used to create the BIM model. Um, in fact, anybody can log into the system, into the CDE, uh, at any certain phase of the project lifecycle, can insert, extract, update or modify the BIM model according to the uh, various permission levels that were granted to each of the users or the professional actors in the BIM process. It's composed of various uh, tools, plugins for code checking, clash detection, project time schedules, and other BIM process related management aspects and guarantees interoperability be between the various stakeholders involved in the BIM management process. It um, completely ensures, therefore, uh, data exchange, including IFC creation and data management which of course means that whoever's involved in the BIM collaboration process is completely independent from having to use the native file format. So everything can be taken, uh, can be taken place in IFC. So we'll have a look at the platform um, and the various aspects involved in its uh, major features. I wanted to uh, give you a brief overview of how the CDE is composed. We have the various actors here that can be um, granted access by a BIM manager, a BIM coordinator, and his delegates. Let's just take a look at how we can access our CDE, our BIM platform. We'll log in as an administrator. We can see all of the projects for which we are uh, involved in. We can go into the various folders. Uh, we can address various aspects of defining the entire environment for users, for example. We have a list of all of the users, uh, professional role players that are involved in the project. Each of these can be granted with uh, specific permission levels. We can add new users and so on. Okay. We can assign them to specific companies. Put their uh, information uh, in the profile settings. We have the possibility to keep track of all of the events that have been taking place uh, during the um, process management. We can filter data so we can have a complete overview of all of the events that are taking place. Of course this data can also be exported to CSV format. Let's go into one of these projects here. We'll open a folder 
We can see the various organization levels, the structural uh, organization levels for each of the projects. There we go. We can, of course, edit the data referring to each of the projects. We can uh, include and exclude uh, specific uh, profiles uh, or, mm, let's say, the, the, the different professionals that are involved in the various design, design disciplines that are involved in the project. They can be structural engineers, BIM coordinator, the surveyors, um, MEP engineers, and so on. Each of these can be granted access or limitations to the amount of data that they can see uh, or be able to uh, modify according to the phase that they're involved across the project lifecycle. We have the BIM share environment, which is, um, uh, let's say, a basic resource, a knowledge uh, resource for um, basic instructions involved in the uh, entire project. We have the manuals that need to be followed and basic instructions that may be uh, available at any time to anybody involved in a specific project. We can see here the various uh, architectural designs that can be obviously shared in the various formats. All of these are versions, so we can keep track of any updates, modifications, uh, document replacements, and so on. We can um, see the various IFC attributes here on the right-hand side in the uh, panel. Grant permission to various uh, users to uh, be able to see, uh, view, upload, um, uh, and modify data. As you can see here, the permission levels can be set from the BIM manager or his uh, delegates. Another important aspect is that we can view the, uh, the information directly within the platform using our AsBIM uh, browser which is a web application uh, directly available within uh, us being platform. We can view the model, the IFC model directly. We can query each of the objects. We can also apply a cutting section here. We want to navigate through the building. We want to make a, a quick view through. We can vary the cutting plane. We can orient this according to our uh, preferences and therefore cut through the building to select specific objects or filter down to others. Uh, we can also use the um, browser to federate models. Let's say, for instance, we want to federate the architectural model against the structural model. A simple drag and drop from the platform of the ar architectural model that was probably sent to us by the structural engineer. Here on the left, we can see the various models, the IFC models in a tree structure. We can um, use the visibility settings here to view the various models that we want to federate. Uh, in this case, we can see that we need to realign the structural model according to the axis of the uh, reference axis of the uh, architectural model, as you can see. We can make the visibility settings so that we can see the model beneath the architectural model. Of course, we can adapt the transparency levels we can use color coding to concentrate on uh, specific elements uh, referring to either the architectural or the structural model itself. We can concentrate on a specific uh, floor plan here using the filters. And we can also query specific objects to see the uh, properties, the IFC properties, as you can see for this roof slab. We can link up documents to the objects present in the model. Simple drag and drop will therefore link up this uh, thermal technical data sheet for the insulation slab uh, to the slab itself. And we can view this data. Of course, this is multi-platform, meaning that we can access all of this information either from PC desktop or from mobile applications, uh, mobile devices. We can query other objects. We want to uh, address the reinforcements here for this column. Therefore, we can see the rebars and the rebar schedules data for this column or for uh, other elements in our model. 
for instance, we want to see the same information for um, beams or for slabs. In this case, we can also use the markups and issues because we are uh, obviously in a collaborative environment. Therefore, we, we are bound to find some kind of uh, conflict at a certain point. We can deal with these conflicts using the markups and issues. In fact, we can send off specific notifications to users within the platform that will be notified via email to take action on specific issues that may arise along the, manage the BIM management uh, phase. So we're asking one of our colleagues here to uh, deal with um, an issue regarding this window. We want to modify this window here in the IFC model. In turn, We'll just log out and then log in with the other user profile. He will be notified this time to take action on this specific uh, issue that has arised for this window here. We can send a message across to our uh, colleague saying, OK, we will we'll, we'll deal with that later on. I have prepared a modification. Here's the new model and I've just updated it can then upload this will be versioned of course as an updated IFC model the BIM, the BIM coordinator will then log in again he'll be notified that uh, an action has been uh, taken uh, to correct that error he can then reply to this colleague saying okay thanks a lot uh, continue with uh, the other tasks that have been assigned Another interesting feature is that we can also do this in a collaborative working environment. In fact, we have um, a dynamic chat that can be uh, that take place between collaborators within the project. We have uh, a live messaging system where two um, members of the uh, design team can look at the same model and work together. They're in two offices completely uh, separate. Uh, one can be in one location in the world and somebody with the other person can be in, in an entirely different office somewhere else. So what happens here is that we can align the models and send messages um, about uh, certain issues that may be arising and actions that need to be take, taken place to resolve specific conflicts or issues that may arise. So this is done across a chat. They're both looking at the same model. The BIM coordinator can, of course, send messages to his colleague requiring specific information so they can work together, align the model so that they can both see the same thing. At this point, he can require information asking for specific instructions. What do you want me to do? So the other uh, role player says, OK, I want some information regarding this roof slab. Can you please link up the technical data sheet supplied by our manufacturer with regard to specific uh, thermal uh, performances for insulation? So he can link up the uh, data sheet here to the roof slab. This is obviously now linked to the IFC file. So what we, what we have here is a geolocated document within the entire IFC model. There are also other important features such as filtering through for documents. In fact, we can uh, filter the IFC model, uh, searching for these PDFs, for example, regarding the characteristics of our uh, windows, doors, any maintenance aspects that need to be governed by people involved with the maintenance of our building asset. We can filter through to see which of these objects has a, a document uh, connected to it. Another important feature is our tag BIM, uh, hashtag BIM, very aware of how we use tash, uh, hashtags these days on social media. In fact, we can now use this for uh, looking for specific information which is linked up to the um, building uh, assets within our IFC model. So we can search for specific values or information directly within the model itself. 
So this was a complete overview of um, the main features of Edificious and our spin platform, common data environment. Thank you for not falling asleep this morning and thank you very much for your, for your time.